Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministry. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of the holy days of the Lord, um, a type and shadow of the plan of salvation. Now, I, I know that I covered... Uh, I basically did an introduction with part one and if you're interested I'm gonna make a playlist for this and I've done a two-part oh more than that I actually did about four videos on Passover and unleavened bread and you can read about this in Leviticus 23, if memory serves me correctly. So, I'm just going to barely touch on uh, Jesus as the Passover lamb. And then I'll put the other studies in the playlist if you're interested. Now, another thing, too, is the plagues of Egypt are very similar in some ways, but there's differences too to the plagues of Revelation. And I have a playlist on that too. I don't understand the differences though. I, I don't know why the Lord did one thing in Egypt and then he does something different to the world in the end times. Uh, the answer might be in the Bible, but right now it just kind of elu it eludes me and um, there's just some things in the Bible we're not going to know until well <laughs> I got a bunch of questions that, that's all I can tell you so let's get going here uh, Leviticus 23 I believe part 2 all right, let's uh, briefly look at Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, during Passover, according to Leviticus 23 and verse 5, and you can read the whole thing about when uh, the angel of death passed over Israel. However, it killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Anybody that didn't have the lamb, the, the blood of the lamb on their door, well, they lost the firstborn, whether it was, uh, you know, child or animal. And when you have a, a an agricultural and animal-based economy, losing all the firstborn animals is, you know, it's a big deal. Really, you think about it. There's a verse in the Bible that says the first lore, uh, the firstborn, any uh, man or beast that openeth the womb is uh, belongs to the Lord. So, all right, so in Leviticus 23 and verse 5, which we read in part 1, uh, one of the lamb was to be sacrificed, and then they took the blood and put it on the doors. And then when it came time for the death angel to pass through the land, I wonder if that was the Grim Reaper, uh, they would uh, skip the house that had the blood of the lamb. Simple as that. Now, what would be the New Testament connection here? Well, Jesus was to be the Lamb of God, a sinless, spotless Lamb of God. And, of course, his blood was shed for sins. And I hope, I hope that if you uh, don't understand what I'm talking about, I hope you'll uh, go to the playlist and go more in depth with this because I, I don't want to make five Bible studies concerning the same thing. So, 
All right, let's go take a look. I briefly covered this in part one. Then you have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, of course, Jesus said he was the bread of life. And leaven was always, in Scripture, likened unto sin. So, you know, it says a, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you've got people that are sinners in the church, I mean, we're all sinners, uh, but I mean, if, if you let gross, unrepented, obvious sin in the church, it will, you know, leaven, it'll, it'll be like leaven in the church. It'll destroy the church for within. Um, Paul had a, a, a man that had his father's wife. Now, this was probably not his mother, but uh, Paul was like, kick him out. You know, they were, they were proud. They were proud about all this stuff. Uh, where can we read about that? Let's take a look real quick. All right, I found it. I had to pause my study here and take a look. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And, you know, if you like uh, having fun with your uh, partner, uh, get married. That was the solution to that problem, you know. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Huh. So, I, you know, it didn't say mother. So, I'm assuming this is his stepmother. Uh, maybe mom and dad got divorced. Maybe she died. I don't know. But, uh Maybe she decided that, uh, you know, maybe she was a pretty young thing, half the age of daddy, and then decided that uh, she liked the son better. You know, I don't know. But uh, I've seen that happen a few times. So he's playing around with his father's wife. Verse 2. And you're puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver to deliver, listen to this, to deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Oh boy. Oh, that's a heavy verse there. I could, uh, you know... When we do, if we truly are saved and sealed and we commit something, a sin really bad, um, will the Lord take our life away to save, to save us in the long run? I, you know, I don't know. Wow, that's a heavy verse right there. Woof. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Yeah. Unrepented sin spreads. That is why they build prisons. Because they love those people. You know? I, I, it makes me crazy when I read somebody 
commits an armed robbery and kills somebody, and then you find out that they've been arrested over a dozen different times. Yeah. I mean, you know, there was a gang member who shot a girl in the head. It's a good thing she didn't die. He might have actually uh, got prison time. No, he didn't. They put him on probation for a while because it was his first offense, and he was a youthful offender, and, you know, just because it was a gang initiation, you know, he was a good boy, and, you know, uh, yeah. They ought to take judges that do this stuff, and, um, well, let's just say it involves rope and uh, trees and telephone poles, but, hey, that's just me. Um, yeah. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. And if you want to, you can read the rest of, you know, pause this study, and then you can read the rest of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and keep on going, because it's, you know, people say, oh, well, the New Testament's different than the Old Testament. I don't see it. Honestly, I don't. I don't see much of a difference. Except for, uh, instead of sacrificing animals, uh, we got the perfect sacrifice in Christ. So, and we don't need a, a Levitical priest to uh, do things since we've got a high priest in Christ, prophet, priest, and king. Read the book of Hebrews. So the purpose of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was to go through the house and not your the building with the four walls. That's not exactly... That was a type and shadow. You go through the house, any kind of leaven you'd cast out. Um, so there's two types of yeast that are mostly used for um, in uh, our industries. One is baker's yeast, when you want the bread to rise. The second is brewer's yeast. So if you wanted to make bread, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> baker's yeast is for bread. Brewer's yeast is for making beer. And, uh, you know, you could use potatoes and uh, turn that into, uh, if you distill it, concentrate the alcohol, you can make vodka with it. Or, you know, corn. I think they make corn... I think corn is what they use for bourbon. Here it is. I'm born from Kentucky, and, uh, you know, my grandfather was a master distiller at a distillery, and I guess he, from what I heard, he was a bootlegger during the uh, Prohibition because it was the only thing he knew what to do. And uh, Dad was telling me that during World War II, before we entered the war, uh, Dad got a job in a foundry where they were making... Um, wheel uh hub wheels well rims and well hubs wheel hubs for aircraft well, that's what they were doing they were making these uh metal hubs for aircraft wheels and he said he was making more money than dad who was a master distiller uh you know uh yeah for a, a distillery you know making bourbon I mean, that's what they do in Kentucky. They make bourbon. But I think bourbon's corn, or at least it's a major component of it. But what they do is they uh, concentrate it. So, and the Bible doesn't talk very nice about drunkenness. So anything to do with yeast uh, in the Bible is 
generally not a good thing when you think about it. So, so the purpose of unleavened bread was to go through the house, get all the yeast, and throw it out. Is there a New Testament application of this? Yes. Instead of going through the house and throwing away your Fleischmann's yeast, uh, look in the mirror. Is there sin in our lives that we need to get rid of? You know, when you become, when you come to the Lord Jesus with his blood, this Passover, the sacrifice of the lamb, well, then what comes next? Purging out the sin out of our lives. That's, uh, you know, think about it. That's what these these uh, holidays of the Lord, the holy days, were all about. You know? Now, I'm going to post uh, the... Um, the playlist on the uh, comments and in the description so that you can take a look at the uh, playlist where I'm going to go. I've got my previous studies. If you're interested in doing Passover and Unleavened, unleavened Bread, a more in-depth study, I'm just glancing over this stuff right now. All right, so Passover was first. And then after that, you had the Feast of Unleavened Bread. 50 days later, what came? Pentecost. Ah, now here, this is where it starts getting interesting. Now, unleavened bread was mentioned in Leviticus 23, uh, verses 6 through 14. Now, Pentecost was mentioned in Leviticus 23, verses uh, 15 through 22. It was a time, a day of celebrating the first fruits harvest. Uh, I mentioned in the last study about uh, the barley harvest. There are, there's an early harvest and then there's a late harvest. You've got a, uh, let's see, Passover was probably right around late March or early to mid-April. And then 50 days later uh, was Pentecost. And like I mentioned before, this God's calendar started in the spring. It was an agricultural calendar. You know, it's not like our calendar. It starts in the middle of the winter. You know, no, it's so it was basically that's the uh, spring is when you would start planting after preferably after the last frost, right? Now barley uh, ripens uh, if you plant it in the fall and let it overwinter, as they call it, it takes about sixty days to harvest. So obviously you would plant it slightly, you know, before. Passover. So, and like I mentioned, their uh, radishes, three weeks. Can you believe that? 21 days, you can have a crop of radishes. So, you've got um, scallions, spinach, lettuce, summer squash. All these things you could harvest well, I don't think they had squash in the Middle East, but uh, yeah. So let's see. You've got a bunch of different things. So there was a an early harvest. So take a look. So they called it the um, harvest of first fruits. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see now. Is there a New Testament application for this? Well, uh, absolutely. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 2, 
verse 1. Now remember, um, Pentecost in the Old Testament was the early harvest. Keep that in mind when you read this. Acts 2, 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, now remember, this was 50 days after Passover. That's where the word penta comes from, five. Um, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Ah, they were all with one accord in one place. Didn't know they had Hondas back then, did you? Huh. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't quit your day job, Bob. Oh, wait, I'm retired. Never mind. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Ah, now what's that all about, Chaplain Bob? What's, what's a rushing mighty wind? Well, when you look up the word wind in the Old Testament, Greek, okay? New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. I don't care what any of those people say. The, uh, when you look up the word wind, it's the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, I believe is how they spell it. Uh, you ever go to a tire, a tire place, you know? Uh, they have pneumatic tools, air tools, you know? Sometimes it's better to have tools that will operate off air than electric. It's a safety concern. You know, if you had your hoses, your air hoses in water, much better to use air than it is to use electric. So they use pneumatic tools, air tools, wind. But that same word is also the same word for Holy Spirit, for spirit. It's the same word. And I covered that in another study, but I, I'm not sure. I'll have to take a look. I'm not sure I can find it either. But uh, if you look up, wind and spirit is the same word. Now, there is a reference to this in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Uh, yes, the Old Testament was in Hebrew, but not the New Testament. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth. Okay. Uh, a little point here. No mother. Well, if you want to say mother earth, you sort of kind of could. I wouldn't go with the definition that the New Agers are trying to interpret it with. But, you know, Adam had the same mother and father. My opinion is Jesus. But, hey, what can I tell you? He's called the first Adam. Jesus is called the last Adam. All right, so. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth and breathed, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. All right, so you had a body when God formed man of the dust of the earth. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's the spirit. And then man became a living soul, body, soul, and spirit. Ah, there you go. And then um, just think, God made man in his image. God made man in his image. Man has a body. Man has a soul. Man has a spirit. And then you get these Jehovah's false witnesses that'll tell you, God's not a trinity. Oh, well, I, I don't like the word trinity because it's not in the Bible, but you know what? The word Godhead 
is. And Jesus is part of the Godhead. God the Father is probably the soul. The Holy Spirit is, or the Holy Ghost is the spirit. And then Jesus was in a body when he lived on this earth. So you had body, soul, and spirit, three parts. And then they'll say, well, there's only one God. There's only one God. Well, that's true, but when you look at me, I got a body, a soul, and a spirit. I'm three parts. Do I have a, am I a three-headed beast? Like, uh, what was that, Cerberus or whatever, the three-headed dog? You know, that's what the Jehovah's Witnesses will, false witnesses will try to trick you up. Uh, they don't even know. They don't even know God the Father. They don't know who Jesus is. They think Jesus is an angel named Michael. I mean, really, as if an angel could die for our sins. You know, you know why they got rid of the King James Bible? 1 Timothy 3.16 says, God was manifest in the flesh. That is one of the big reasons why they got rid of the King James Bible that they used for well over 50 years. Yeah. And then they had to create their own perversion, the New World Order translation. Oh, yeah. So, the word spirit and wind are the same word in the Greek. And it has the same type of reference as in the Old Testament, believe it or not. All right, let's take a look at John chapter 3. And I'm positive this is going to be a at least three-part series. Because uh, I'm just barely getting into... Um... All right, when you look at the Old Testament holy days and then contrast that to the New Testament holy days, God's plan of salvation, Christ was crucified, Passover is done, unleavened bread, done. Pentecost happened um, almost uh, close to almost 2,000 years ago. Over, I should say over 1,900 years ago it happened. Okay? So you had the, the spring and the summer uh, holy days have been fulfilled. But guess what? The fall holy days have yet to occur as far as the New Testament's concerned. We're going to get into that. All right, go to John chapter 3, verse 1. And we're going to go back to Acts chapter 2. I know, I skip around a lot. I'm sorry. You know, it's just there's so many doctrines that... Uh, uh, tie into each other. It's sometimes I don't know what direction to go in. But I got to prove to you about the uh, the spirit and the wind. John chapter 3 verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Oh yeah, you've read this before. I know you have. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. Why? Because he knew that the rest of the Jews didn't like Jesus. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what? When you got somebody out in the wilderness doing all kinds of miracles, teaching people, and he's got thousands of people hanging around listening to him, you better believe that King Herod and Pontius Pilate had sent spies to uh, check this dude out. Yeah, uh, you know, when you got somebody that's drawing a, a crowd, you want to know what they're saying and what they're doing. And you better believe those spies were reporting that uh, Jesus was doing all these miracles. Or... Maybe they thought, oh, magic tricks. And we haven't figured out how he's doing them yet, but, uh, you know, it's an interesting show. That's the unbelievers anyways, right? 
Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Nicodemus, he had it right. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeah, I know. you. Everybody should have known this one. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Well, guess what? You ever heard the expression when a woman's getting ready to give birth to a child? The water broke. That's when you know it's coming out. Born of water. Now, that's fleshly being born. Okay. What about being born of water? Again, what did John the Baptist do? Oh, Baptist. Ah, oh, that's a clue. Um, John the Baptist. Yeah, what did he do? Oh, that's right. He baptized people in the water. Wow. Thanks for pointing that out, Chaplain Bob. I, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Is there another application of this? Let's take a look. Uh, well, let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And what is sin? Sin is recorded as being transgression or breaking of the law. And I think that's in 1 John. I don't know. It's, it's in there. Just... Take my word for it. That's what sin is. Transgression of the God's law. Uh, and John preached the baptism of repentance. Well, what it was unleavened bread? Taking the sin out of our lives. Repentance. There's people today, I'll tell you, repentance has nothing to do with turning away from your sins. When you hear that garbage... Run, people, run. Run for your lives. God absolutely wants us to, to turn from our sins. They'll tell you, oh, just believe on Jesus and you're saved. Keep that job with the, as a hitman for the mafia. Don't worry about it. You believe in Jesus, you're saved and you're sealed until the day of redemption. I've heard them basically teach that garbage. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Unleavened bread, right? Verse 5. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. That's what confession is, not going to a, a a Catholic priest and telling them how many times you slept with your neighbor's wife last week. That's, you know, more bragging than you are, you know. When you confess your sins, you should be turning away from them. And uh, trust me, I'm no pillar of the faith. Believe that. Verse 6. Mark 1, verse 6. And John was clothed with camel's hair and a girdle of a skin about his loins, and did, he did eat locusts and wild honey. I'll guarantee you if John the Baptist showed up at uh, 99 point something percent of the Baptist churches, he'd be told to leave. 
because they wouldn't like his doctrine and they wouldn't like the way he's dressed. How dare you come into the Lord's house dressed like that? You're some kind of homeless bum. Get out of here. Yeah, trust me. And John was clothed with camel's hair and a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water. See, there's two baptisms. You are baptized at birth, when the woman's water breaks. And then you should be baptized again with water when you come to the Lord. And no, I'm not a member uh, pushing the, uh, I think it's a Church of Christ. Uh, his name was Campbell, the preacher or whatever, that started the Church of Christ. He, uh, memory serves me correctly, they teach that you have to be water baptized to be saved. Um, I wonder if the thief on the cross got baptized in water. Uh, I don't think so. Well, if he did, it's not in the Bible. But Christ told him, well, the one thief, that he'd be with him in paradise that day. Oh, sorry, thief on the cross. Uh, you got to get water baptized. Otherwise, sorry, you can't join me. You know, Pastor Campbell, that's what he you know, teaches. I mean, I'm not telling people not to get baptized. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think they should. Uh, but it's just a public profession of your faith. That's all it is. You know, washing away the filth of the flesh to hopefully be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, right? I have indeed baptized you with water, but he, Christ, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Ah, now Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, same thing, okay? Now what is a ghost? It's a spirit, right? There's a Holy Ghost and then there's the unholy ghost or ghosts. Verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Okay, so Jesus had told John to baptize him. Now, that's not in this uh, gospel, but it's in another one. John didn't want to baptize him, and he says, Lord, you want me to baptize you? I have need to be baptized of thee. I'm paraphrasing, but... Yeah, but Jesus said to allow it, you know, suffer it to be so. So, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water. All right, so Jesus was dunked. He was coming up out of the water. He saw the heavens opened and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's go back to John chapter 3. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Listen carefully. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Ah. See, you were just talking about being born of the Spirit here. Now it's talking about wind. The wind bloweth where it listeth. 
and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Can you see which way the wind's coming from and which way it goes? You can hear it with your ear. But can you see the wind? No. You might be able to see the leaves when they're being pushed in what direction. But you can't see the wind. So it is with the Spirit. Verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? All right, let's go back to Acts chapter 2. All right, Acts chapter 2, I guess we'll start at verse 1. Oh boy, Bob, you skip all over the place. What is wrong with you, dog? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind pneuma spirit and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them oh yeah dog they were on fire let me tell you something they were on fire. Think about it. They were on fire for Christ and the Holy Ghost. And no, they weren't slithering on the floor speaking gibberish that nobody can understand. That's the wrong fire. That's strange fire. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The mighty rushing wind, people, and then, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What does that mean? Gibberish that nobody can understand? No, they were, later when we read this, they're going to be speaking to people in their own language. Here it is, these guys are a bunch of fishermen from Galilee, okay, you don't go to college for six years to become a fisherman, okay? You know, you're not a lawyer, you're not an accountant, you're not an engineer, you're not a brain surgeon. You're a fisherman, okay? These guys were not the educated class like the Pharisees were. Uh, now, when you read about the Sadducees in the uh, Bible, the New Testament, the Sadducees were the Levitical priests, sort of, kind of, for the most part. They were the ones that handled the temple rituals, the animal sacrifices and the burnt offerings and the drink offerings and the meat offerings and all those kind of things. And the only things that they accepted was the uh, five books of Moses. Their main focus was on the laws of Moses. Uh, their big thing was the book of Leviticus. Uh, but everything after Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, everything after that, they didn't accept. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept the Proverbs. They didn't accept Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Nope, we don't accept that. So, they didn't believe in the resurrection. I mean, can you imagine that? They didn't believe in a resurrection. So, I guess when you die, that's it, you're gone. I mean, what kind of a sad religion is that? That's why they were called sad, you see. But the uh, Pharisees, um, 
they believed in spirits, they believed in the resurrection, and they believed in the entire Old Testament. But they also had their other Babylonian oral traditions that Christ blasted them over constantly and constantly and constantly and condemned them for. Oh yeah, Christ did not like their little oral traditions. So, Acts 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation unto have, under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that they heard every man uh, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Language. Not gibberish. Not blah, 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 blah. That's not tongues. You might make that noise with your tongues, but that's not tongues. All right? Everybody heard them speak in his own language. Not everybody spoke Hebrew. Not everybody spoke Greek. Not everybody spoke Latin. I mean, generally you would speak two languages. Uh, Europeans get this, okay? Uh, if you lived in main, main, mainland Europe, if you only spoke one language, you were considered illiterate. Seriously. Most everybody in Europe speaks at least two languages, which you have to, you know? Uh, I don't know if that holds true for the uh, England, the UK. Um, I know during World War II, a lot of their soldiers spoke a second language, a lot of them French. Um, but, uh, you know, Americans, uh, we're lucky if we know one language. And uh, a lot of our uh, a lot of our people uh, barely know one language, and a lot of people in America don't even know English. So what can I tell you? But here it is: these people were speaking to this group of people in their own language, preaching the gospel to them. They were not shouting or slithering on the floor with gibberish. I'm sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong. And these were Galileans. These people were not educated scholars. They're fishermen, okay? Big difference. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians. Uh, you know what? Look up the Parthian Empire, people. Totally erased from our history books. Parthian Empire was uh, a contemporary of Rome, equal, very, very close... Uh, equal, very close in size and power. Matter of fact, Rome tried to conquer Parthion and couldn't do it. They were both pretty close to each other in strength. That's why uh, Rome didn't brag about conquering Parthion because uh, Parthia, because they couldn't do it. You know, you don't brag about your failures, okay? And um, a matter of fact, I'm of the opinion that the wise men that came from the east were from uh, were Parthians, and there are. Why would history erase this information and knowledge from our collective consciousness? Well, because there's a good chance that they were scattered Israel. Very good chance. Uh, I forget who it was some communist, a Marxist, said that if you sever a people from their roots, that they will die. I mean, let's face it. If you sever a plant from its roots, what happens to the plant? It withers and dies. 
And that's what they've done to our people. They have, they have separated us from our roots. Parthia, P-A-R-T-H-I-A. -A. Look it up. I mean, there's an entire empire that existed during the time of Rome that probably were Israelites, and you've never heard of it before. I mean, here it is. I'm a student of world history, and I've read several books on world history, and I only recently discovered Parthia. So, verse 9, Parthians and Medes. Uh, the Medes were part of the uh, Babylonian Empire, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia was uh, Babylon, the area. And in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontius, and Asia. Uh, Phrygia, and Pamphylia. I'm probably not pronouncing those right. In Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. That's what tongues is when you can speak a language and tell people the gospel of the Lord in their own language, something that you've never studied all I can do is say praise the Lord on that. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. They're a bunch of drunks. Don't listen to them. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Yeah, you bunch of idiots, it's, it's too early in the morning to be getting drunk, or whatever the third hour of the day is, I don't know. Verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And the book of Joel has some interesting stuff that's quoted right here in, in Acts. It's coming up, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Oh, okay, that's why I've been having dreams. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke where is this matthew 24 mark 13 the book of revelation uh you know how many people have read the book of joel or the book of what who joel uh Where's that, Chaplain Bob? Uh, it's in the Old Testament, just before you read the Gospels, the book of Matthew. Yeah. You know? And I'm not complaining about those, the, the regular people that listen to me talk to myself. No. But I'm just saying, you know, how many church people? You know what? When people tell me they're Christians, I love to ask them. Um... Can you name me 10 books of the Bible? You know, that's an easy one. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay. Most people can't do that. You know, I mean, well, churchgoers. 
I, I don't even, they, they haven't even bothered to read. There's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. The book of Joel, man, there's some, there's some heavy duty stuff in the book of Joel. It's a small book. It's only a couple pages long. Uh, I, I don't remember how big it is, but it's, it's not that big. All right. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great notable day of the Lord come. All these pre-tribbers that say, oh, well, you know, Christ's return is imminent. It could happen at any second. Well, you can argue with Christ, you can argue with John in the book of Revelation, you could argue with Peter here, and you could argue with Joel. Because you're wrong. There's going to be signs before the Lord returns. And he doesn't come one and a half times secretly. Doesn't happen. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken. Who is he talking to? Ye men of Israel. Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Now remember, this is about 50 days after Christ was crucified. Verse 25, For David, for David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Ah, I touched that in the um, part one about Christ when he went down to hell and preached unto the spirits in prison. I did an entire Bible study on that. Um, the um, Abraham's bosom. Yeah. You know, there's only one verse in the Bible about Abraham's bosom. It's in the book of Luke, if I remember correctly. Uh, forgive me if my memory's not the best. It's called getting old. It's called old Oldheimer's. I mean, I'm sorry, Alzheimer's. But, uh, you know, there's three quarters of a million words in the Bible. And it's kind of hard to know where it's all at. So, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak. Uh, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption." See, David went to hell, but he's not in hell anymore because Jesus went to hell and preached to them and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Believe on me. And they did, and then now they're with God the Father. Their soul and spirit in heaven, waiting for the resurrection of their new bodies. Not this corrupt flesh that we wear today. A robe, a white robe of righteousness washed in the blood of Christ. He, seeing this before, 
spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus who hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of, uh, of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Wow. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that, people, is the gospel. What did Peter say? Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the gift is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord God, as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this evil bunch of devils. Well, that's the Bob translation. Verse 41. Then they that gladly, gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now listen to this and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to every man, as every man had need. Ah, oh, this is true. This is true communism. People sold their stuff and helped the brethren. Uh, don't show this to Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland, because it's, that's not going to happen. So... In the, uh, in the world, the only thing that's even close to communism, true communism, not Marxism, Marxism is a lie that they call communism, but it's, you know. But uh, I suppose bees and, and ants are about the closest thing you come to this kind of stuff. So people sold their things and helped everybody. And sold their possessions and good and parted them to, every, to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, people... This was the last uh, holy day that um, the uh, spring and summer first fruits holy day that was fulfilled in the Bible. All the rest of the feasts are going to be future. I have a feeling this is going to be more than three parts, probably four. So I'm going to close this out right here. And uh, now you know what the um, Pentecost was. Of course, the you-know-whos have different names for all this stuff. 
And I'm not so sure it's even Hebrew. It's probably Yiddish, which uh, Yiddish is not Hebrew, people. You take somebody that, that can read and write Yiddish and speak Yiddish and hand them an Old Testament written in Hebrew, they can't read it. I mean, the word, the letters might look alike, but uh, English and German, the letters look alike, but that doesn't mean I could read German. Oh, I know a few words. Um, 45 years ago, uh, I knew more than a few words, but uh, that was in the 70s. Well, mid-70s when I was in Germany, in the army, drinking uh drinking beer yeah i was uh not casting out that uh the leavening the yeast but uh, the lord uh got that leaven pretty much out of my life so i hope you learned something um you know it's just the bible is just one big book where all the doctrines are interwoven. And I hope you see that. I mean, I, I see it. There's a lot of stuff I don't know, but there's some things that I do know, and, you know, I try to share with everybody. And we'll try to do so until uh, you-know-who takes me off the air. And when he does, well, then I'll know it's my chance, uh, my cue not chance, but my cue from the Lord to plan B, whatever that might be. So, all right, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, and one thing real quick. Uh, click the description or the comment that's pinned, and you'll see my playlists. And I've got more in-depth studies if you're interested in Passover and Unleavened Bread or some other subjects. Um, and like I say, anybody's interested, um, send me an SD card or a USB drive because when I go offline, that's going to be pretty much it. I am on archive.org, A-R-C-H-I-V-E dot O-R-G. Uh, it's part of the Wayback Machine. If you wanted to look at an old website that was on the internet years ago and no longer exists, you can go to the Wayback Machine and there's a good chance that they've copied that website. Or you could look at an old version of a website. Uh, really good stuff. But if you look, if you go to archive.org and type in Chaplain Bob Walker, uh, you should be able to pull up my, uh, I've got a small channel that I'm working on. Uh, I'm not going to put up, I am not going to put up my thousand studies. No, no. I'm probably going to put up, right now I've got close to fi around 50 studies. But uh, I'll probably put up about 100 and that'll be it. Uh, Lord willing, of course. So, all right. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>